So I'm gonna get started. If if everybody gets their microphone working, they can jump in. So the zero DT strategy that I use is very similar to a couple of other ones that use these, I guess, iron butterflies. Um, there's one of them called the the JOIF. I think stands for the Jim Olson Iron Fly, and my strategy is very similar to that. Um, I guess where his differs from mine is what he will do is he will take the SPX and basically at the cash open or within two to three minutes, maybe five minutes or no more than five minutes, uh, what he'll do is he will sell an iron fly um, right at the open and he'll sell basically an at the money iron fly. And that's basically what you're doing is you're selling the two short strikes at the money and then you're going to go out of the money and buy your protection. I've been doing basically 10 points wide in the SPY. Um, <clears throat> in SPX, this would actually be uh, 100 points wide. Or it's, I want to say they call it an actual... Um, They basically call it a 20 wide on the SPX, I believe. On the SPY, it's just a 10 wide. And that's just 10 strikes wide, actually. And what this does, I'm going to add this. Let me clear out all these trades. I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I use uh, the Analyze tab a lot for analyzing trades. Um, it's very helpful, or for me anyways it is. So our iron fly basically looks like this. And I guess if you're not familiar with how the Analyze tab works, basically this blue line is at expiration so that is what this spread would be worth at expiration so if we sell the 345 you know we're basically collecting 534 dollars worth of premium right now and at expiration if this stock is trading at roughly you know 374 um we would keep all of that premium but that's not really likely to happen so what we're going to do is we're going to buy it back long before um this contract or these options expire at the end of the day and then the purple line is actual live like right this minute so this shows you actually what the spread is doing right now um, the reason i like these iron flies is because your theta decay is so high uh, so basically right now even though this is two days left there's $243 of Theta Decay per day right now. Um, tomorrow, this same spread will probably sell for around $250 to $300. So that means you have $250 to $300 of Theta Decay in one day. Um, and sometimes if you can get that much at 11 o'clock, which was what I've been trying to do, from 11 to 4, there's exactly 300 minutes left in a trading session. So... If you can get a $300 credit and 300 minutes left, that means that your Theta Decay is roughly $1 a minute. And that is why that you can get into this trade and out of it relatively quick, even if you wait a little while to open. Um, because I'm only trying to get roughly $20 um, out of this, at least $20. Um, in SPX, that would be by 10, so that would be roughly 200 um, I think some of the others that are trading a similar strategy to this um, in the SPX, I want to say they try to take between 150 and 200 um, for their profit target, and they're trying to get out between four and 600 on the stop loss. Um, and I'll go over how I set all of that up in a minute. But <clears throat> anyway, you know, using this analyst tab, it it really helps me to understand where. I'm going to get stopped out. So, you know, let's say that this trade that I've entered right here, um, even though this is two days, and I'll do one in SPX in a minute, um, this purple line, you know, basically tells us 
you know, at what point how much we're down. So we can see that this 374 short, we're short both the 374 call and put. We're long the 384 and the 374. So I'm sorry, we're short the three. I'm sorry, we are short both 374s and we're long a 384 and a 364. So at this point, if, if we were to enter this trade and our stop loss is $60, I am actually move my mouse along this purple line, and when I see negative 60, that's going to tell me where I'm going to get stopped out at. So that means if this stock moves up to around uh, 377.90, 377.89, 377.80, somewhere in the high 370s range, I'm going to get stopped out on this trade. So I guess I need to first determine if I think it's going to go that high, and you know, that's going to tell me where I'm going to get stopped out at. And we can do the same thing for the bottom side here. If we go, we can see it's going to get stopped out around 368 right here. And by the way, you know, this is using this purple line right here. But the great thing is, since this purple line gets updated basically every few seconds or every second, what's going to happen is our break-even points are going to eventually extend out to where the actual break-even point is for this at expiration. Now, <clears throat> so does anybody have any questions they want to type up real quick before I move forward? Is anybody lost? Real quick. Sure. I heard real quick, Todd. That's all I heard. Oh, can you go back to the Analyze tab real quick? Sure. Okay. One thing that I learned by calling TD Ameritrade is the I couldn't figure out what the red vertical lines were on both of the purple and blue okay. graph lines. Yes. And I found out that those on the purple line that's your break even as of right now so that is if the actual price is between those two so that took me some time to figure out what are those little red vertical lines yes. and what do they mean yes. so i don't know if everybody knows that or not no that's yeah that's correct I, I probably should have mentioned that too so you can see um at expiration here on the blue line it'll tell you where your break even points are um on this purple line uh, because this steady decay what's going to happen this purple line is going to match this blue line tomorrow afternoon. So as this purple line comes up higher, your break-even points are eventually going to spread out and match up to the break-even points on the blue line, if that makes sense. Um, I was trying to explain this to my brother the other day on Sunday, and the, the easiest way that I actually found that I could show how to do that was just to... Um, basically, I built the same trade, but with a lot of time. Because it's, I guess it's hard for people to grasp the um, the actual theta decay that's happening. And we can go up here to, normally I look at just plus one expiration if I'm doing zero DT. If you're doing longer term, you can do this day step here and I'll do four days. And... <clears throat> Making sure I didn't have more than one trade open here. I'm actually going to do single. It's not single. It's day step one day. So, as we go through each day, uh, we can see that our profit, which is some, the, the blue line, keeps increasing. And once we get to, I think this is like 75 days, it's basically this is just simulating the theta decay each day. And we can see, you know, it starts getting steeper once we get closer to expiration. Um, and eventually it's just going to kind of turn into pretty much that right there. Um, so, you know, over time, the purple line is going to 
move up to the blue line. So that's kind of how theta decay works. But instead of this happening over 72 days um, on zero DTE, this is basically happening in a day. Uh, kind of what you see. It's not as as drastic, I guess. Well, actually, it is because it's you know it's you're losing basically $200 of value, you know, in about three to five hours. So let me go back and add our other trade in. So the next thing I wanted to show was um, different strikes that you can choose, or different widths. Um, so this is the 10 wide. Go to oh man, I can't believe that happened. Maybe it'll quit jumping around on me here in a minute. And I'm going to bring in some of these. Um, I think the reason it's moving around is actually because the market is open. So let me do that maybe. So if I set these up for 60, and you can actually see the number move right here. So I'm going to try and set this so... Um, I have 60. That's close enough. And I'm going to set this one. That's close enough. So that was 60 on the low side. So that shows you where our break-even points using our 60 hour stop loss. And this is on a 10 wide. Yeah, 375, 85, 375, 65. Now if we want to do... I don't have a five wide added in, so I'm just going to manually add a five wide here, which will be 375, 370, and then it's going to be 380. I'm going to unshow the 10 wide, and we're only going to look at the five wide, and I'm going to add two more of these. So now that's 60 bucks there on the five wide. And that's 60 bucks on the five wide on the low side. So the five wide, basically our widths are just $5 apart, high and low. Our break-even point is much farther away, so we can get a bigger move. But what you're going to have somewhat of a problem, and it may not be a problem, I don't know, but you're not going to get stopped out as soon. But once you get farther out here, the theta decay is no longer working your, in your favor. Um, think of it as anything that's inside of the triangle is going up and outside of the triangle, so right here, is going down. So if, if we're sitting right here and we're down 45 bucks on this trade, we haven't hit our stop loss yet. But if the stock stays in this area, basically we're going to be losing money to Theta Decay because, you know, this is going to be worth, you know, basically, uh, we look right here, um, $130 at expiration. So that's something you have to be aware of when you go to that. What I have found is that if we do the 10 wide, the 10 wide puts your break even point just, or it, I'm sorry, it puts the stop out point very close to what your break even point would be at expiration. And that is on the 10 wide. If we go to an 8 wide, 
it puts it just outside of it. So it's kind of a happy medium in between there. Um, that's why I've been using the 10. Um, but I think an 8 would also work well. But, you know, this can kind of show you to, you know, you can use this to add your trades in. And, and I'll add, sometimes I'll add 30 or 40 trades in here a day just to see, you know, what my profit and loss is going to look like. So I'll stop on the Analyze tab if everybody is good there. So now that we understand, I say I'm going to stop on the Analyze tab, I want to show you one more thing. So something that we can do um, when we enter these trades is we can take somewhat of a directional bias on this trade. Normally when we enter it, um, we're going to be pretty much right in the middle um, if we're selling at the money. And that's fine, especially if it stays within this range. If you think that the stock is going to go up, you can enter on one side or the other um, of this plateau right here on this purple line. So if, and that's basically kind of what I did yesterday. Um, SPY was at 374. And I just kind of felt it was going to go higher up to 375. So basically, I entered in kind of right in here, which I see that's 372. But um, at the time, it was once you spread this out, it, it all matched up. But anyway, I entered below the plateau here. So as the stock moved up, my profit moved up with it, and I was able to get out sooner, or I could have gotten out sooner. I basically just missed the entry. Um, when I was watching it, I think it was at 294. And then when I hit send, it immediately dropped to 291. And then so I adjusted down to 290 and it immediately went to 288. It just kept dropping faster than I wanted to get in. And I basically watched it drop all the way down to where my profit target was going to be. So I missed that trade and I probably shouldn't have tried to trade again, but I did. And luckily it did work out yesterday. But anyway, you can enter in on one side or the other um, of this. And so you know how to do that. I'll enter one and kind of show you what it looks like. So let's just kind of take an, an educated guess where we think the market is going. And, you know, right now I'm going to say it's going up. Um, it may not, but, you know, we're at 376 right now. So what I would do is I would place my strikes one to two out of the money. I think 378 may be, that would be probably as far out of the money as I would go, but that is in our direction. And I would just sell the 10 wide. And if we analyze that, we can see that we're just kind of right here on the lower end. Um, but since this is two days to expiration, it's not going to be as steep. Uh, but but as it moves up, it's going to help us some. And as time goes by as well, this is going to creep up as well. So that's just going to kind of help us. But the thing is, is, you know, our $60 to the downside is pretty much right here at our break even. But $60 to our upside, it's kind of about the same. Um, and that's mainly because we're not really too far below this. So that is how you can kind of, I guess, position this trade to go in one direction or another. You know, if we go, let's go a few strikes out of the money. That way it really shows. So now we can see we're right here. So if the stock goes up to 380, you know, we're going to make 50 bucks just by going up to 380, even being short and kind of a neutral trade. Um, so that is some way that you can kind of use this um, directionally. And now we can see, you know, we can go all the way over to this break even point kind of before we would um, hit our stop loss of negative 60. But on the downside, we hit our stop loss really fast on the downside. So that is something to be aware of if you do this. 
Um, I haven't really been entering my trades like this a whole lot. It's something I am trying to do. You know, sometimes we just get it wrong. I guess what we think the market's going to do, sometimes it doesn't do that. Um, but I have found that is something you can do. Normally, I find it's best to kind of, you know, we're at 376.57. I think if you want to just be just, I guess, kind of flat or delta neutral, you could sell either the 376 or the 377. Um, they're going to have pretty much I nearly identical, um, I guess, risk graphs when you look at them in the Analyze tab. Um, one thing that you can look at is you can look at the delta to see if it's positive or negative um, because this trade that I've entered is we're expecting the stock to go up and it's out of the money. The Analyze tab basically says we are long 33 deltas. So that means if we move up a dollar, we're going to make roughly 34 points um, or $34 on this. But if we go down a dollar, we're going to lose 30 bucks. So you can try to get it maybe delta neutral. Um, and that, that's another way to play it. So we'll look at SPX. And <clears throat> does anyone have any questions now? Okay, so <clears throat> I'm actually going to go back to SPY real quick. And I'm going to show you how to add, I add my um, one cancels the other orders. So the, the first thing you want to do is you want to build your spread. I'm going to go ahead and use this to just add in my 10 point wide sell spread. Um, you know, that's where we just sell the at the money and then go out 10 points and buy the protection to create the um, one cancels the other order. What you want to do is you want to go over to single order right here and go to first triggers, uh, one cancels the other. And now we're going to right click pretty much anywhere in this trade. And we want to create an opposite order. And that's to close it. And now once we're on this, we need to create another order. Um, and I'm just going to click on now our opposite order. And we're going to do, I'm just going to duplicate it. So we have now two closing orders. And I'm going to change manual here to trigger on both of them. And we want to decide what our profit target is. What I'm using right now is $20 credit or, or $20 making. So I'm going to do negative 20. So what will happen once this enters, and it doesn't matter what we sell this for. If we sell it for $510, once this gets to $490, once we reach our $20 profit, it's automatically going to put in a limit order for $490 to get us out of this trade. Now, once you've created it, you can still go in and, and edit this, and we'll do that in just a minute. For the second one, for the stop loss, I'm going to do trigger also, but this one we're going to do whatever we want our stop loss to be. So right now I'm using plus 60. Um, so, you know, if we're doing SPX here, you know, you could, I think a good starting point is going to be 200 for the profit target and probably 60 for the stop loss. If we stay in the same range that I'm doing SPY, uh, but I do not want to do a limit order here. Um, I've been doing a stop order. Go back to trigger that. When I changed that to limit, it changed everything on me. So we want to do a stop order. I like to do the mark, which is basically the midpoint. And this is going to get us out at market price. Some people may not like market price um, because the spreads can get kind of wide. Um, on SPY, I see the spreads getting are normally four to six cents, and that is for all four. Um, all of our strikes here, all four of the legs, normally four to six cents is, is what I'll get filled at, plus or minus uh, whatever this stop loss is. 
And one thing I have found is that um, just like the SPX is basically 10 times larger than the SPY, I have noticed that the spreads are about equal. Um, yesterday, when I got out of my trade, I actually got out using my, my stop limit. I adjusted it down to, I want to say, $28 of profit. And when it filled at market price, I got out at 22. So I did have six cents of slippage there. Um, and that's basically just the difference between all of the bid and the ask prices for all four of our contracts. But I'm sorry if I started rambling there. What you want to do after you have created this entire order is you want to come down here and you want to save it. And, you know, we can save this, you know, name it whatever you want. Um, kind of what I name mine so now and I'm not going to save this because I already have this same order saved somewhere so now when you want to enter this trade as long as you're on the desktop application you can come over to the call side here and right click any call that you want to sell or right click the short option you want to do you'll go to sell custom and then you'll just choose it and that will automatically populate that entire trade for you so that makes it really simple one last thing when you are doing this, and I found this out yesterday and I nearly got in trouble over it. If you change how many contracts you want to sell, you're going to have to also change how many contracts you buy back to fix this. Um, yesterday I went to sell two and I noticed that it didn't update the buy amount. So luckily I was able to close it. So you're going to want to change that. And as you increase or change your contract size, you may want to go ahead and just save a new one and, you know, maybe name it like two contracts, 10 contracts, whatever you're doing. But that is how I create the OCO orders. Um, so does anybody have any questions on that? I have just a general question. Sure. What made you decide to start trying to do these iron flies? I mean, I've tried it for a while, and it's 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 it was just too much of an emotional roller coaster for me. I said no more. Um, I don't know. You know, I I, I was just browsing the internet one day. Maybe it was on Reddit, and somebody was talking about the certain zero DT strategies, and somebody mentioned that the strategy that I guess that I'm kind of basing this off of, which was that Jim Olson iron, iron fly was working pretty good. But the thing that I didn't like about that, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it because I know a lot of people are making money with it, but I don't like entering in a position that has a narrow window of opportunity or, or not really a narrow window, but just you can't get a lot of movement in stock price to be profitable. I don't want to get stopped out because the credit that I'm bringing in uh, for profit as opposed to my stop loss, I have to have at least 75% of the trades to do better than break even. And it's hard. I feel it's hard to get 75% winners uh, no matter what you do. Um, so what I thought about doing was, you know, instead of selling this right at the open, you know, like say right here, and then having, you know, basically a three or four point move in eight minutes that could possibly stop you out, you know, why don't we just wait until maybe say the middle of the day um, and try and sell something in the middle of the day or once, once kind of lunchtime gets here, 11 o'clock Eastern time, what I've noticed is we have a lot of movement in the morning and then we have a lot of movement in the afternoon at like three o'clock. So I thought, you know, why not try to do this in the middle of the day? And it seems to be working well. Um, and I saw a couple of other traders kind of mentioning doing this and they were having a pretty good success too. So I started paper trading it and Pretty much every time I paper traded it, it made money. Um, but paper trading 
has a problem that you will get fills to get out of your trade before the price ever gets there. So paper trading is really good to learn how to create these, you know, the open close orders to make sure you get them right. Um, because it's real easy to get it wrong and you get in and it will immediately fill. If you, if you have your stop loss set up wrong, it's immediately going to fill right as you enter. So you're in and out and you may be at a small profit or a small loss of like two or three dollars. So I do like the paper trading to learn that. Um, but, you know, I just thought and, you know, we have actually a lot of chop here pretty much every day. So. <clears throat> But I just kind of thought, you know, the, the middle part of the day seems to be kind of the best part of the day. You know, that's why yesterday it was pretty much when I decided to get in, it was kind of right in this area right here at 394. And I was like, man, I feel we're going to go up and test 395. And then it ran away from me and I missed it. And then I'm sitting at my computer and I'm just seeing this trading flat. And I'm like, this is like what I'm looking for constantly. I'm looking for, you know, 11 o'clock and getting this flat trade right here. But I was a little bit worried yesterday because of this 365 level here. Um, I feel it's kind of a bit of an inflection point that we could move fast away from it. Um, and we did move down a little bit yesterday. But as we came back up, um, I was able to get out at my, my $20 profit target. Um, so that helped. But that's, that's kind of why I've started looking at this just trying something different. One thing I can tell you is that the iron flies that everybody else is doing where they enter it first thing in the morning, you do get a lot of theta decay right there at the very beginning. And once the time goes on, it does slow down a little bit. Okay, so this is it's a site I've been using quite a bit. Um, it's zero dtespx.com. And so the blue line is the SPX price. The orange line is the VIX. And then our two purple lines is the expected move. But the expected move is basically the at the money call and the at the money put price, which is the exact thing that we're selling. So this can kind of tell me, you know, if we are, and I'm sorry, the dotted line is basically the historical average of this expected move. So if I see that we're well above it, I may think it's a good time to sell or at the money price because it's historically higher than it normally is. Um, and then when it's below it, you know, there's not much you can do because yesterday it stayed below it pretty much the entire day. So it stayed below it in the morning quite a bit, but you can see how it just basically drops off. Um, but, you know, everybody says all your theta decay happens in the first 30 minutes. But I mean, it's just a, a constant slope all the way. Um, it does look like it's kind of slowing maybe a little bit right in here. And then it just really steeps off right there. But I don't really see a problem entering this later in the day. Um, what I was about to say, though is once the implied volatility drops, once the VIX gets back down in the 15 level, I'm not really sure how well this strategy is going to work because we're probably only going to get maybe 150 bucks um, out of the SPY. So that's going to be maybe 1500 out of the SPX. Um, right now, the SPX... If we do the 20 wide load, if we do the 20 wide here, it should get us 100 points. Yes, yeah, so we're at um, 3775, 3875. We're only getting basically three grand worth of credit. So at one minute, that's basically $20 a minute at 11 o'clock. Um, 
once the implied volatility drops down, once VIX is like at the 15 level, you know, we may only get 15 for this instead of 30. Um, and it may be harder collect to collect that $200. I really don't know. But that's that's kind of where I was going with that. Um, does anybody else have any questions before I move forward anywhere else? Hey, B-Town Trader, how are you? I am recording this, so I'll try and get it uploaded. Um, trying to go over kind of everything that I'm, I'm doing here if it's in this zero DT stuff. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I guess what we can do is I'm going to analyze this one, and let's kind of see where it's at. Let's close all these other trades I've built. Reset that, close that. So at zero DTE, this trade is basically short five delta. So that means for every dollar the stock moves, it's going to make or lose five dollars. Um, and we can see we're right in the middle. So like I was saying earlier, if, if I think it's going to continue higher, um, what we could do is I would probably go just one strike right here out. Let me go ahead and send that. And this is paper, so I'm not really worried. I, I mainly want to show you, I guess, how I will kind of adjust this. And it's probably not going to fill. I mainly just want to get a feel. Oops. And I don't know why I can't get a feel because normally it's like instant. Okay, there it is. So, and you'll notice that I didn't do the OC order. So, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'll do is I'm going to right click this and we're going to do an opposite order. And I'm going to right click this. Actually, I need to go to uh, one cancels the other. And then we're going to duplicate that. And I'm going to set this to something really low because I don't want it to fill right now so I'm gonna say 23 so that's like $500 I don't think we're gonna get there and then I'm gonna set this to 
We're just going to do 34. That's actually going to be a stop. Just making sure I have that right. I think that's right. We'll know if it feels automatically it's wrong. So it hasn't filled, so that's good. So what I'll do now is I'll watch the Analyze tab and I'll try to follow my order to see where we are on this graph and if I see that we start to move outside of the range here I mean other than just letting it hit the stop loss there's not really much you can do um, if I feel it's going to have a reversal I may start to adjust my profit target higher um, you know, can see right now it's only at 22 bucks. It's seven. It's bouncing around. And after, say, 20 or 30 minutes, though, you know, what's going to happen is this purple line is going to start moving up. And, you know, we'll be able to get some decent profit there if it does. And then what I like to do is my OC orders here. I'll start adjusting them. Uh, maybe to get more profit um, or to lower my stop loss to a lower amount. So, you know, if I was setting this up for real and, you know, I sold this for $28.55, I would probably set my profit target to $26.55, take $200, and then my stop loss at roughly $600. I'd probably leave that. If, if I'm getting, say, $100 or $150 profit that I'm seeing, you know, I may try to, I guess, get greedy and see if I can get more um, and start lowering this number to stay below whatever the actual mark price is, the midpoint, to get more credit. So far in the SPY, um, you know, by within 20 minutes, I'm normally at, I, I say within 20 minutes, so far my average for the whole month last month has been less than an hour. Um, and that's also me holding a couple of days longer to try to get more than 20 bucks. Sometimes I get 30. Um, about two weeks ago, I was like at $48. So I moved my stop loss, I think, to like 30 bucks. And I got stopped out there and got out at 30. Um, but you can get more than that. But that's kind of how I will adjust these. Um, I will watch them. Or you can just kind of do nothing. You know, there's been some days that I've set this and I've walked off and I've came back and within like 20 minutes, it's already hit my profit target. I'm out and I'm done for the day. Um, as far as adjusting these, I mean, I think, I don't really think it's a smart move to adjust maybe your stop loss to get even a bigger loss. I'm not really sure that's worth it. Um I think what I have done sometimes when I have stopped out, um, I may enter again just to see if I can kind of recoup some of those losses for the day. Um, but for the most part, it's it's been working out pretty well for me. So does anybody have any questions while we kind of just watch this for a few minutes maybe? What what's the risk of the price gapping and you taking a max loss? So that is the reason that I use a market order for my um, my stop loss and not a limit order or a stop limit order. Basically, if this if if the midpoint of this spread goes to thirty four bucks, it's going to enter get entered as a market order and it's going to get us out at whatever the market gives us 
but that means that we may have some slippage um, and sometimes that can be big. Uh, I saw somebody on a, one of these Facebook groups that I visit. Um, they were in SPX and they were doing some credit spreads and they had their stop loss set for 255 bucks, I think it was. And they used a market order, which is what I'm using. And this happened about three weeks ago on Monday afternoon. I want to say right around three o'clock or so, 310, the market moved, uh, the SPX moved like 100 points in about a tenth of a second. And, you know, I actually posted some pictures of this. It, I guess it'll help explain better. I think I recall seeing those pictures. Yeah, let me. And I'll, I'll tell you what I think maybe happened. I, I have really no clue if what I'm saying is correct. So this right here. So this is... Um, book map, which is in Thinkorswim, it's actually free um, for the uh, the the ES, which is the S and P five hundred futures. So this is the I want to say this is um, like tenth of a second is what this chart is here, or it's maybe half a second. It's real, real crunched up time, um, and pretty much all this color that you see right here are open orders. You can see that all of the orders basically got shut off. My thought is a market maker's server shut down and all of these computers got taken off the books, or I'm sorry, all of these orders, because in the next couple pictures, you're going to see that all this, these sell orders, all of these sell orders are practically going to disappear right here. There's no sell orders. Nobody is selling anything. It's just buying. And you can see right here where you go from all these orders right here. And I'm not sure of the color representation. Different colors represent different amounts of orders. Like say light blue may be 10 orders. Red may be 100. You can see that pretty much everything went to zero. And when this happened, the SPX moved up 100 points. And basically this tenth of a second right here. When that happened, a bunch of people got stopped out. It didn't matter if you were in the SPX, SPY. And I looked at some of the ranges for um, some of the contracts. And the, uh, the SPY, um, I want to say it was like at the time, maybe SPY was trading around 387. And um, the ranging contracts, uh, the the 387 contract went from $20 to $60 in like a tenth of a second. And the SPX, that was SPY, the SPX went from $200 to $600 in that time range. But because there was some slippage in that, some people got filled at like $1,700 on this contract that was going from two to six hundred dollars um so that is something that could happen i think a lot of people got filled at like four and five hundred because the majority of the trades were between four and five hundred if, if you go to the spy or if, if you get on charts you know you can actually look at individual um contracts and look at prices of them. And you can see how the contract price can move throughout the day. So this is basically just the 350, 3750 call. And you know, you can see the range. Um, basically in that tick, it, it shot from like, you know, 10 to 40 or something like that. It was a really big move. So to answer your question, if you have, I'm, I'm sorry for the long winded answer there. Um, if you have a market order in, you're going to get out, but you're probably, you could have some slippage. It may be 60 bucks or 100 bucks in the SPX. Um, 
and it could be four or five hundred dollars. The thing is, because it is a market order, you're guaranteed to get out. If it keeps moving away from you, if you have a limit order, it could blow past your limit order. Let's let's say that we have a, a 34 market order here, and it's a, a stop limit, which means at $34, the stop hits, and then our limit price is $35. If it blows from 34 past 35, it will fully go past your limit order and you won't get out. But if you have a market order in at $34, it's possible that you're still not going to get filled at 35, but you may get filled at 37 or 38 or it could be higher, it could be lower. So that's that's one thing to look at with the market orders and the limit orders. That's why I'm doing a market order right now with the SPY. I'm trading so small. I'm not really worried about a lot of slippage there um, because it's, you know, I've had it um, the two times that I've gotten out using my stop limit order. Um, one of the times I got out for four cents above so I was out at 64 and then I used it again yesterday but I used it to take a profit and I got out roughly six cents above so when SPX that would be out 40 bucks or out 60 bucks so maybe that answers your question um, I think it would be a really good for somebody to look and see you know what the average you can get out at when using a market order No, I mean, it answers the question that, I mean, ultimately you want to make sure that if you do take a, a max loss, you don't wipe out, you know, two, three, four months worth of profit. And oh, yeah. that's how long it takes to recover. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, but if you have 10 strikes on the SPX and some odd happens, if, if you did have a limit order and you were paying attention and all of a sudden it's at the, at the, uh, long strike, you know, you're you're looking at a big hit, which would oh, yeah. wipe out. No, I agree. All your profit, probably for for the year. I agree. Um, one thing I was talking about earlier with them, um, I know that yesterday you had asked me why I chose the eight wide as opposed to the ten wide, and it's something I went through earlier in this video. Um, I'll kind of run over real quick with you what I found. Um, is your break-even points here for this trade of roughly uh, 3803 and we're at 3746 here um, you know down six hundred dollars on this puts us right in front of and I'm looking at the purple line right now puts us right in front of that break-even right there and it's six hundred dollars right here is going to put us pretty much right on that break-even this is with the 10 wide if you do like say an eight wide it'll normally be outside of this break even point um, the narrower the strikes you go the farther your break even gets pushed out um, so you know if you were to do a five wide, um, say in spx 50 points instead of 100 you know it's going to put your break even probably somewhere out in this area right here before you got that 600 hour loss and it's probably going to be somewhere in this area right here but something I was telling them, as long as your break even is inside of this zero line right here and inside of the, the blue triangle, Theta Decay is going to bring your break even up closer to this point right here. Once your break even point gets out here and you're trading outside this range, um, you no longer have any type of Theta Decay that you're gaining from this strategy. And I feel that's probably the primary thing in this strategy. Um, and I think somebody earlier asked, you know, why I kind of chose this. Um, a lot of the zero DT strategies, they basically open first thing in the morning and kind of get out really quick. And I decided to try to wait and let the market maybe play out and see what it's doing. Um, because, you know, I feel that once lunchtime gets here, it, it kind of starts slowing down. And that's kind of what's happened here. You know, it, it, we haven't really done anything since 10 o'clock. Um, we've kind of traded in this same range. 
and you know right now we're up a hundred bucks so you know that would be ten dollars in, in the SPY but that's kind of something I look at right there we you can actually see since we are a little bit over to the right of the curve if we have a small pullback you know we'll get up to like you know 170 right in there um, a pullback of say five to ten dollars in the SPX so maybe that kind of answers some about the the spread width I know I will try, as long as my video comes out okay recording here I, I should have it uploaded sometime soon but that is why I, I choose those um, that width the, the just the 10 wide seems to get me closest to my break-even point with kind of out going outside of it um, the I think the 8 wide is probably works pretty good because it places you just outside of it So does anybody else have any questions about anything? Are you going to switch to the SPX or are you going to stick with the SPY? I, I probably will eventually. I'm not sure when. Um, I could trade SPX right now, but it's my account size is pretty small. So taking that type of hit on my account would be a pretty big hit. Um, that's why I'm trading in SPY right now. I think you could probably do. I feel that you could do the same thing I'm doing in SPX. Um, just because I already know a lot of people are already doing it now. Very similar trading that I'm doing. And see, if I was doing paper trade, if, if, if I'd actually set um, my stop loss in the paper trading at 200 bucks. This probably would have already filled in paper because for some reason I can be up like 80 or $100 and I'll get a fill for say like 250 bucks profit and it'll never get close to there. So that's why I tell people, you know, use the paper to learn how to enter the trades, but do not get used to um, making easy money like we're up. $127 just a second ago it's probably would have filled um, that's basically why I set this so far out because I didn't want it to fill yet I basically wanted to show you how you know our purple line is climbing so now if we come back to 377 you know it'll be at 200 bucks Keep hitting my microphone. Anybody else with any questions? There's a lot of um, iron condor strategies out there for zero DTE on SPX. Have you looked at any of those? Or played around with those? Um, I have. You know, buying is the strategy that I'm doing is very similar. Uh, have you heard of the Jim Olson Iron Fly? Uh, specifically, I haven't. No. Okay. He, he basically, what he does is he does kind of this same strategy. But instead of waiting until later on in the day to enter, uh, what he does is he waits and and don't quote me on his exact strategy to enter, but he enters pretty much in the first five minutes of the opening trade um, because that first five minutes, you do have a lot of theta decay, but it does happen throughout the day. And what he'll do is he'll, he'll enter an iron fly right at the open and he'll set the profit target and the stop loss. And basically within 10 or 15 minutes, you either have, um, I want to say he uses 150 for his profit target. And I don't know if the stop loss is anywhere between four and $600. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's what he uses. It's If you just 
search for uh, here. I'll I'll try to search for it. So the Jim Olson Iron Fly Zero DTE. Um, look this up. It's very similar. Um, the, really, the only difference between what he's doing and what I'm trying to do is he is entering this pretty much at the open. Uh, so yeah, he's saying he waits 10 to 15 seconds and does this at the open. I think he does anywhere from 50 to $100 wide wings. And then I'm pretty sure he even sets an, an OCO order as well because um, it says, yeah, he uses TOS. Um, I kind of read this here, and I liked a lot of what I read, but I just wasn't, I wasn't big in entering the trade, you know, right here, because, um, as I mentioned to some of them earlier, you know, we seem to have this big movement right out of the gate, and then, you know, around 11 o'clock, we kind of trade flat for a while, and then we have another big movement kind of at the end of the day. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid kind of 9.30 to 10.30, trying to avoid that, and then I'm trying to avoid also 3 to 4 o'clock. Uh, so that basically gives me roughly from 11 o'clock to maybe 2. Um, but so far, pretty much every trade I've entered has been between 10.30 and 11. And my only real loser, I entered right at 10.30, and I pretty much entered in something like this. Um, I basically sold like right here. And at that time, I wasn't really trying to take any like short, maybe directional to this because you can make this somewhat directional. And I entered right here and we moved up like the SPY moved up like three points in the next eight minutes. And that basically stopped me out. Um, my market order got me out at 64 bucks instead of 60. So I did have four dollars of slippage there um, in and that was SPY. I would say SPX probably had maybe $40 of slippage. Um, so just, just looking at slippage, there's $30 of slippage right here. There's $20 here, so that's $50. We have $5 there, that's $55. And we have five dollars here so you have roughly sixty dollars of slippage right now if this was to fill so if this was at negative six hundred um you would basically get out probably around 660 uh give or take where you get hurt though is when this starts to move deep in the money because right here you know we're at 3690 we're at 3800 there's $110 of slippage just in this contract right here. Um, so once you get deep in the money is, is where you can get hurt. But how this is set up, you're going to get stopped out normally once you get about $3 into the money. Um, what I've found is that a move higher or lower of about a dollar, well, this is on SPY, so SPX is going to be probably $5. But... In SPOI, what I found, a move of $1 higher or lower normally will affect my price by about $0.10. Cents. Um, once we get to $2, it's it gets closer to about $0.30. Cents. And then once we hit $3, it's almost at $0.80. Cents. So it increases drastically the deeper you get in the money. But because we're going to get stopped out two or three two or three strikes into the money on SPY, so on SPX it may be a few more strikes. I'm not sure. I haven't looked yet. Um, but you you don't want to get too deep in the money. That's for sure because these strikes get wide once you get in the money. What else you got?
have you played around with um, a one to two, one to two ratio or even one to one? Get out, take two hunt, take twenty, get out at uh, twenty loss. Or is that just too tight? I think it's too tight. The the re- yeah, the reason I'm doing sixty, I th- I think that you could go lower on the sixty. Um, I will say that one day last week, I don't know if it was Wednesday or Friday, um, I did get close to stopping out. I want to say I can I can show you because I was I was posting stuff about it that day, and. Just scrolled right past it. Hang on. I'm away. I don't know what happened. Okay. So, on this, what what I did, and it, I realize it probably doesn't show it when I post this. This line right here and this line right here represented where I would get stopped out at my $60. And at the time, about $369.50 was my stop out point. So because my stop out point is still inside my break even point, as time goes on, my my stop out point is going to come farther out closer to my break even point on both sides. It's got a little bit of range you can go on the put side, but on the call side, it had roughly another dollar and a half it could go out, uh, given I stayed in the trade long enough. Um, so what happened, I think at the time we were, you know, 367.80, I can't quite read that. And what happened is, so this shows where I adjusted where my $60 out break even points were. And I believe this is the same trade. Uh, yeah, this is the same trade. And I even said that I think I closed this one basically for break even almost. Um, but because of some time went by, I don't really remember how long this was. It had to have been no, not much more than an hour. Um, my stop out point, my negative 60 did get closer here. And that's why I actually didn't get stopped out is by the time the stock moved up, to 369 and a half I my my $60 point had shifted farther to the right so I didn't stop out but I got real close to it I was at like negative 50 it just flashed like negative 50 on the screen once and it turned around and started heading back this way and basically once I got right here in this profit point I said screw it I'm getting out for close to break even either it's a five dollar win or five dollar loss i don't care i'm going to move on to the next day and that's what i did um because it seemed to me that it could go higher and i think it may have went higher that day i don't remember but you know the time on your side really helps and another thing you can see this purple line here we already have quite a bit um that is above the zero line right here so that is all profit and we can see you know 30 minutes before it's all below it. So time is is really on your side helping you here. Um, if you do narrower strikes, the you getting stopped out is going to be less. Um, if you do a narrower width, like say eight or even five. Um, so that's something you can do. I've If this will open here, another thing I do, and this is probably about to clear. Hold on, I didn't add this. This is basically tells us what's happening today. Um, this spreadsheet should be in the uh, 
chat group. It's the same one that has the yield curve. Um, under events, I do like to look and see what events we have. So, you know, we have job openings at 10 o'clock and then FOMC member speaks at 11.45. So there's an hour and 45 minutes here that you could get in and out of a trade possibly. Um, and then I like to look at the zero dtspx.com pretty much we can see theta k is happening all day long if we have an fomc meeting this purple line will pretty much go straight across i st i think last week or the week before i posted about it i stayed in a trade for almost two hours and i didn't get any theta decay at all um the stock traded flat the entire day so So what I was going to show here, I haven't shared this yet because a lot of these numbers do not, um, they're not correct, but I have made it so I can enter in the date. And last time I tried to use this on SPX, it didn't work either. So I need to fix that before I share it. Right now it just does spy. There's not an option, there's not contracts that expire on the fourth on the SPY. So all I have to do is enter the ticker symbol, the date, and then the strikes. Um, so this is basically a 10 wide. I just changed this from 10 to, you know, whatever. And if we do So this is basically a 10 wide comparing to a 7 wide. So right now the SPY and the 10 wide, we can get $500 of credit on a thousand buying power. On the seven wide, we can get $438 on uh, $700 of buying power. So we have $260 of risk right here. Our risk is basically in half um, on the seven wide. I've looked at the eight. So we're at 466 credit there, risk 334, buying power 800. Um, you know, it's one thing is the wider the strikes you go, the more theta decay you do have throughout the day. Um, I tried to compare the 10 wide and the 8 wide in the SPX um, one day last week. And I want to say that the 10 wide hit that 20, that $200 profit target about four or five minutes sooner than the eight point wide did. So you will get out sooner um, going wider. I, I know a lot of them like to go wide because it, it just gives you more theta decay, but it's, you know, it is all, also like you said, you do have that, that potential of that wild swing um, and also getting taken out um, of the trade. Does anybody else have anything? I, I just want to say thanks for all you do. I sure enjoy the channel and all the, the help that you give and your information. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you. No problem. I'm glad you enjoy it. Thanks for sticking yeah, around. Sam, thanks for sharing. I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I, I try to share. One last thing. Let's see where our trade is. I'm just curious. So it's at 207 right now. Um, and we can see how the, the profit tent's pretty, so, you know, it's still moved. So we're basically two strikes in the money right now. And we are at 
180 bucks profit. So, I mean, I feel that I feel it's a good strategy. I've had excellent luck with it, me personally, on full cash account. You know, none of these are paper trades. These are all cash and all these. And, and like I say, it's it's small size, but it's working for me right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even two strikes in the money, we're still doing good. I think we've been in this trade for... 1025 it's 1105 so 40 minutes roughly 40 minutes in this trade it's up 187 dollars and it's moved two strikes in the money i mean that's probably why a lot of people i think get out at maybe 150 bucks um just because it's probably easy to achieve 150 dollars um, I can't really do that in SPY because I'm getting killed in commissions because it's basically five bucks round trip. So as long as I get 20 bucks, that's clearing 15. I would like to clear 25 because that lets me clear 20. So commissions is something, but even when I factor in commissions into this, um, you know, once we once we subtract the commission's out of here. I think I was still over like 110 or 120 for the month, which works out to 10 or 11% because you're only using basically $1,000 every day and you're just reusing that $1,000 over and over. Um, you know, something I kind of mentioned to my brother over the weekend, SPX here, you know, if you've got 10 grand, that'll let you do 110 wide here. And I feel that you're going to get 150 bucks sooner than you're going to lose 600 um, unless you're just terribly lucky or unlucky and and get stopped out on a you know move down like this right here this is like i say that's what i'm trying to avoid so i'm i feel like i'm gonna repeat myself here Anything else? Well, maybe if you uh, continue to do these, you can create a channel that just has these trades in them all by themselves. Okay. I can try to do, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, because for the most part, all the trades that I'm going to do are probably, I'm probably going to stick with the 10 wide just because it is working so well for me. Um. I may go to the eight wide, but right now the 10 wide is working. I'm probably going to do that. I, I told myself that I wasn't going to increase um, my contract size until I got a loss, but I don't want to take a loss. So I'm going to start increasing contract size soon. But like I say, I was going to wait till I got a loss, but I'm, I'm, I'm on a run, so I hate to kind of ruin that either. Because I know the first time that I go up in contract size, I'm probably going to take a loss. And like everything, it's going to wipe out all the gains just because that seems to be how it happens. I have to go, but I just want to say thanks for sharing, and I'll look forward to watching the video when you get a chance to post it. No problem. Sounds good. Thanks for joining in. All right. Yeah, take care. Bye -bye. No problem. Thank you. And, yeah, thank, thanks all, all of y'all for, for joining in. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've done one of these videos. I've been meaning to do it, and things happen. I had the entire summer, and it just it didn't work out, and I just – I don't know. I got up this morning. I thought I'm just going to make a video to try to answer some questions. And it would be a good time to maybe try to record it. And hopefully I can put it on YouTube. Right now we're sitting at about an hour and a half. But anyway, thanks for joining.